Hey, I'm Georgia and if you've seen my other vlogs, you'll know I have moved to London recently. If you haven't seen them, go check them out. So now that I've moved to London, we are now on the hunt for an apartment, a little place to call our home while we're here. Except apartments are actually called flats here, so I'm actually flat hunting. So anywho, we arrived in London and we didn't really know anywhere. We've only kind of been here before as tourists. So London is flipping huge. We spent the first few days walking around different boroughs to get a sense of where we might like to live and what the vibe is of each. And then we narrowed our search down to two different boroughs. So the first borough is Islington. Really nice vibe, uh, lots of cafes and pubs and what have you. We were also really interested in Hackney, which is just next door, so clearly we had a type. We wanted to head over to that kind of northeast area. Pretty much, it felt like any borough you could create a home in, but this was just one where the cafes and the pubs we really liked. It felt like it had a lot of green space. And we also didn't have a lot of time to explore other areas, so we went with our gut and started looking in these boroughs. So in terms of the non-negotiables that we had when looking for a place, the first was a bathtub. I love to soak in hot water, <laughs> as you'll know from my Iceland vlog. And that is especially so in cold climates. So I think future me is really going to appreciate having a bath. The second was a dishwasher. We got really used to having a dishwasher in our last place. So just having that saves so much time. The third is space for bikes. So both Liam and I have bikes and we definitely wanted those to be somewhere secure, especially here in London. The fourth was to have either two bedrooms if we could afford it or a spacious one bedroom that could comfortably fit a desk. For the whole pandemic, we've been working off of our dining room table. So to upgrade to a proper desk space, that was just a real nice luxury that we wanted to have. The other things we were looking for were natural light and then also getting a place that was unfurnished. Like the furniture in these places can be so hit and miss. We very much appreciate having our own style and making a place feel our own and making those design decisions. So to be able to have an unfurnished place was a pretty important thing. Oh, and of course, our budget. So we were looking at around the £2,000 per month price. So those are the criteria that we were looking for and let's get into the actual apartments themselves. I can't wait to show you these 11 apartments. Okay, so flat one, we were just so excited about. We absolutely thought this was our place. <laughs> We were so confident, which is quite funny in retrospect. It had quite a warehouse vibe to it, I guess really concrete polished floors, white tiles, white walls, low-lying ceilings, really moody, really cozy. It was quite large in the sense that it had two bedrooms uh, with heaps of built-in wardrobes as well as two bathrooms. I don't even know what we would do with the second bathroom, but it was within our price range. So we put an offer in on this place and we were so confident that we were going to get it, which is very funny when I look back at it now, because we didn't. We put in asking price, like 1998, just thinking that that is what you had to do, but it was our first place. We hadn't yet learnt that you have to go over and someone else snapped up this place for 2,115 pounds per month. So good for them. It was actually quite funny though, because there was another like identical apartment that came up in that building and we put it in a stronger offer. We did actually get accepted for it, but we didn't hear back from the agent until after we had already accepted another place. So we could have ended up living in it, but in the end it was probably for the better because the second offer we put in was $2,200 and yeah, ouch, that was getting pretty over our budget at that stage, <laughs> which shows how desperate we were getting. So flat two, it was actually in a church, which is insane. Literally, this would have been the front door entering your home. 
but it was a really nicely remodeled converted church home there are a bunch of different apartments in there um, it got to benefit from some beautiful stained glass windows it was also really modern and clean and fresh throughout modern appliances nice hardwood floors quite spacious but then there was like this random door in the in the stairwell there <laughs> which was very very random and on top of that the bedrooms were also tiny I wouldn't even know if you could fit a single bed in there so it was definitely already going over our price point and the fact that we couldn't actually have one bedroom with one study it was kind of like two tiny rooms made it a no-go for us so we didn't put an offer in on this one okay flat number three was above our budget we knew that going in and we had kind of contemplated whether whether or not we could get a roommate in there to kind of subsidize that because it was two bedrooms, two bathrooms. So essentially you walked in, there was a bedroom straight away and a bathroom straight away. That bedroom also had a little courtyard, which was super cute. Uh, the laundry was downstairs as well. And then you went up the stairwell to almost an identical version of the bottom floor. It was just a really run down house. It had clearly been a rental for a bit too long and it didn't feel clean or neat or homely. It felt really like run down. And on top of that, when we go up to the top level, the top level was really small. So up here, they're trying to fit a kitchen, a living room and a dining room, but it's all very cramped. The TV is literally in the middle of the room, which isn't a very good feng shui. The kitchen is tiny. The fridge was really small. However, its biggest benefit was this stairwell up to the rooftop and then bam, you had this gorgeous rooftop terrace, which just had incredible views, beautiful greenery all around, could definitely get around that. But ultimately it didn't feel like a home. It was just run down and the owners weren't going to uplift it in any way before the new tenants came in. So we didn't think it was worth that extra amount, even with that gorgeous rooftop terrace. So we didn't put an offer in for that one either. Okay, flat number four is one that we got from the real estate agent off market. They were asking £2,000 per month for a one bedroom, one bathroom, which we thought was a bit extravagant, especially once when we got there, the bedroom was really small. They wanted to keep all the furniture in there as well, which just like wasn't necessarily our aesthetic but the bathroom was really modern it had a spacious laundry in there as well the kitchen was super modern as well all new appliances all built in really clean and spacious but then when it came to the living dining area it was really small there were three of us with the real estate agent and we were all kind of like jumping around one another there was however this gorgeous balcony which we could definitely see ourselves sitting in but ultimately we thought for the price they were asking it was just a bit too much uh, especially what we were looking at what we could get for other places so we did put an offer in for this one around 1850 but the landlord did really want 2000 and we just weren't willing to pay that for that size of an apartment no matter how modern it was flat number five was another flat that we ended up seeing off market through a real estate agent who we'd been in contact with for other places so this one was a more reasonable price. It was actually only a two minute walk from the other one as well. And already you can see 1850 rather than 2000 pounds. So a huge saving there. This was a fully furnished place. So it wasn't ticking all the boxes for us, but we were getting to a stage where we were seeing so many places and having no success that we were willing to go furnished for one year, especially like, I don't know, the guy's furniture was fine, had a massive TV. <laughs> So it felt clean and spacious and, and modern enough. So we actually did put an offer in on that one and we got rejected. We had asked for the double bed to be removed because we wanted to bring in a queen sized bed just to have like more space to sleep on. Liam's tall. <laughs> and we got rejected for that reason. So it does really come down to very small minute details between yeah people getting places and not okay so next is flat number six and this place was super modern it had just been renovated however it was tiny 
tiny. So essentially it was two mid-sized rooms, but 2000 pound for this place, for this size of a place just seems like wild. Although super modern, I don't really see how it could fit us as a couple comfortably. So we definitely weren't interested in applying for this place, but it was good to see a really nicely renovated place. Flat seven we found through open rent and we really liked this one. It was, I don't know, it just had character to it, I guess. It wasn't the most modern, but we really liked how the previous tenants had styled it and it felt really spacious and airy and light and bright. So we put an offer in. We didn't hear back from the landlord for like 12 hours. So we messaged back saying, okay, well, we'll offer 1800 then. And we didn't hear back from him again for another 12 hours. And then eventually he got back to us and said, yes, you're accepted. But by then we'd already been accepted for another place. So it was a bit unfortunate because we would have liked this place. But in the end, I think where we ended up was actually better. So maybe it's, I don't know, good luck that they took their time getting back to us. Okay, flat eight was a bit further out from the areas we had been looking at, but we went there because it was 2000 pound for a two bedroom. So we were like pretty stoked if it was within this price range. It also had a really distinct dining room separate from the living room, which then was separated from obviously the two bedrooms. So it felt like it had four really distinct spaces, plus it had a courtyard, plus a modern bathroom. However, it was kind of lower ground. So it was really dark in there. And once again, we came back to the furniture issue where both rooms had bedrooms in them and they came furnished. So we probably weren't gonna get through with asking the landlord to remove one of those beds as we would be creating a study in the other. And on top of that, the landlord was asking for a three year tenancy, which is just such a long time. So we didn't even bother putting an offer in on that one. Besides, there wasn't enough natural light down there anyway. So flat nine was another open rent. I haven't really got good images of the bedroom, but it was quite spacious. It would comfortably fit a desk next to the wardrobe there, as well as a king bed. Then it's also had heaps of storage, a really modern, nice bathroom with a bathtub and some nice mood lighting. And then it had a main area with this massive built-in cabinet tree, which we're huge fans of ply. So we really liked that aesthetic. And then we thought it was quite clever how it distinctly broke up the room from kitchen to living with that small dining room in between. All the appliances were super modern, super nice kitchen, full-sized kitchen. So that one was great. And so we ended up putting an offer in. We offered, uh, I think 1800 initially, which was 50 over asking price. And we got into a bit of a conversation between the landlord and he had other people that he'd seen that day. And then we ended up offering 1850 to secure it. Then we were successful but there's still a few more flats that we saw on that same day that were contenders as well. So flat 10 was quite clever. It was quite a spacious, large kitchen, all super modern with an equally spacious uh, living room. Then it had both the bathroom and the one bedroom, but it also had a secondary like study room so that was just up a flight of stairs from the main living area so you could really feel distinctly different from the rest of the house and not only did you have this small study room but you had this private courtyard so a lot of different features in this house a bit of a funky layout but we thought it was pretty cool however it was pushing over our asking price especially when we'd seen a few places at that point now for more 1850 so we didn't actually put an offer in on that one and then next was the final flat we saw for our whole flat hunting experience it was a two bed two bathroom it was a bit over budget but it did look quite gorgeous in the photos. And when we turned up, it did live up to that. It had this gorgeous pink kitchen, this massive deck. The bedroom was fine. It didn't have any built-in wardrobes, but it was cute. It did have an ensuite with a shower. And then there was a main bathroom with a bathtub. So 
plenty of bathrooms going around. And then as for the second bedroom, while super cute, it didn't have any windows. I guess that was fine because we would use it as a study. But once again, it was one of those situations where the landlord had it furnished. And if we were to ask them to remove the bed, we would be, I guess, a lesser choice. So for that one, we didn't put an offer in. So those are the 11 apartments we saw. It was quite a chaotic experience. Do I want to do it again? No. Will I stay here forever? Yes. But I am so glad we found a place in the end. We'll do a proper moving vlog and tour of the home we decided on later. So let's go into some tips for approaching a very daunting, flat hunting process in London. In terms of how we found properties, we used Rightmove, Open Rent, and Zoopla. Essentially, it just felt like there was this pecking order and we started at the bottom rung. We came in thinking we'd get the first place we wanted. We did not. And then eventually, after we saw more places, more places, more places, got to know more agents as well, we eventually got to a point where they were calling us to show us places that were off market and that's where we had a lot of success. But as I mentioned, open rent was actually where we ended up renting ours through. And I think that was also because you just get to have a connection with the landlord themselves. You get to introduce yourself. I also would say that when we started, we didn't realize that there were certain rules you had to play. I'm not saying these are the rules all the time, but in our case, uh, pretty much nothing went for asking price. You always had to go above asking price. As well as that, there's a few other things that you can use along with <laughs> higher rent to get a place. And that includes offering longer lease terms. Um, if it comes furnished, just kind of like accepting whatever furniture is there, because obviously if it's between you asking them to remove one item of furniture and someone else who's asking them to remove nothing, then it's a much easier choice for the landlord to go with that person. So I know not that I agree with it, but we definitely lost a few places for that reason. And it made for a really awful experience, but we're through it, we're past it. <laughs> 